This is our current Duramax L5P. And this is the 2024 Gen 2. What makes this one different? Well, I'm Gail Banks, and we're going to tear it down and show you. Right away, I can see we've got a new turbocharger here. The bold up is completely different. New turbine housing, new compressor housing, a new high speed variable geometry controller, and probably a new compressor and turbine. So we'll get this puppy off, we'll break it down, measure all the critical dimensions on the compressor wheel, turbine wheel, inducer diameter on the compressor cover, and I'm really curious about this new VG controller. I'm told it's ultra quick. It's time to get this thing over to Mike in the engine room and he'll get it torn down. All right, Mike, here it comes. This 2024 L5P is what you'll find in the new 2024 GM pickup trucks. Mike Keegan, our engine builder, has partially disassembled both the 2024 and the 2023 engines so we can compare the parts side by side. Let's start with the bottom end. Crank, shaft, rods, pistons. It's basically the same in the 2024 as it was in 23 and forward. But the L5P bottom end uh, is pretty damn bulletproof. We have tried to blow up a Duramax. There's a series called Killing a Duramax that we've done. We got to over a thousand horsepower with a stock bottom end. We did make a cam change because we also over revved it a bit. But yet we, we've never broken this bottom end. We're good to go there. But what has changed is on the other end of the Conrad. The piston is all new. This is really different. I think what you're looking for here is two things. Combustion efficiency and diminished emissions. If you can cut emissions in the engine, the emissions system has less work to do and will live longer. Uh, or maybe even could be redesigned to be less restrictive. The piston comes within about 30 or 40 thousandths of touching the head. Uh, it actually protrudes slightly out of the deck of the block on these L5Ps. You start injecting before top dead center. The piston comes up within about a millimeter of the head, pushes air back into the fuel. There's a huge clockwise rotation of the air in cylinder. It's called swirl. It's part of what makes the combustion more uniform, air-fuel ratio. But suffice it to say, the air-fuel ratio in the combustion process on a diesel engine is not uniform. You have richer areas and you have leaner areas. You don't want to have too rich of an area or you might produce soot. That's one of the pollutants that might be cut with this new design. So that's been kind of state of the art. In our, in our racing pistons, about five years ago, we made the section in the center, this dome, more pointed. Uh, what I was trying to do was take a lean section, which is right at the center of the combustion chamber, and fill it with piston to push that air outward. The guys at GM have done the same thing we've been doing in the racing engines. Uh, but they've taken it one huge step further. With a bowl a diameter, they put in what we might call a shelf around the perimeter of the combustion chamber. And the squish area is quite a bit narrower. Let me retrieve a nozzle here. The spray angle out of the nozzle, it was very small outlet holes for the fuel and the fuel pressure into this thing on this new engine 
uh, is 2,200 bar, shooting the hell out of 30,000 pounds at the peak injection pressure. It doesn't come straight in, comes out at a 155 degree angle on this new engine, 158 degree angle on the older uh, version of the L5P. I'm estimating the included angle of the plume at about 16 degrees. It might be more, it might be less. It might vary with pressure and flow, uh, which I'm sure it does. The black line here is the included angle. That's the aiming angle of the uh, injector tip. So mul there are multiple holes around the perimeter of that tip that spray into this combustion chamber. So what might have been impinging here is now spraying into this area. So the mix of air and fuel at that point is way the hell different. Uh, I, I think this might be a power enhancement as well um, at the same fuel rate. In other words, if you make the engine more efficient at the same fuel rate, it makes more power. Or you can make the same power with less fuel. That's what this is all about. And if you burn less fuel, you're probably going to make, and you burn it in a similar or improved manner, you're probably going to make less emissions. There's a real enemy in diesel emissions other than the smoke or the soot, and it's NOx, N-O-X. And then that has to do with peak temperature in the combustion process. If, it, if this has anything to do with, with diminishing the peak temperature, whoa, they're going to reduce NOx. So, next thing we want to look at here is the head gaskets. Here's the 23 head gasket, 23 and earlier, here's the 24. They're both multi-layer gaskets. So the layers are uniform in thickness, and there's four of them on the early one. On the later one, we have three uniform layers and one thicker one. There's different ways of getting high unit loading around the cylinders. Uh, the guys at GM have come up with a new improved head gasket design that will seal better and last longer. There's some oil drain back passages, there's water, and, and overlaying them, they're identical in size and placement, which they'd have to be to be backward compatible. So we have a new improved gasket on the 24. So this is the 23 nozzle, this is the 24 nozzle, similar shape, different manufacturing process. The outlet of both nozzles, and these spray up into a gallery in the piston to cool the piston, they're both about two millimeter, a little over two, two millimeter. Then you have the retaining bolts, and they have gotten different as well. I, I really like the retaining bolt on the 24. It is a lot sexier looking thing, that being this one here in my right hand. It's just fully machined. This one isn't, uh, but, but, but both of them serve the same purpose. When you come back down to idle and you don't need uh, all that cooling nozzle capacity, there's a little, call it a pressure relief valve, inside, it's like a ball check, a spring-loaded ball check. The oil enters the bolt at idle. That ball check forces all the oil flow to go to the crank, to the rest of the engine. You don't need the piston cooling, but you want the idle oil pressure. That's what you're looking for. Then we move to the oil cooler. What we've got here is the LBZ, as this is typical of the earlier Duramaxes with lower power outputs. Then we move into the 17 to 19 L5P, and then we move to the 2020. And the 2020, they, they did a lot of other things. They put, put a far more powerful cooling fan for the radiator, a hell of a lot more engine coolant radiator, they upped the towing capacity, so lots of other stuff in the truck having to do with 
suspension, etc. Ram, Ford, and GM. I understand they're getting near 40,000 pounds towing capacity now, which to me is obscene, absolutely obscene. Whatever weighs 40,000 pounds, it's going to dwarf the truck unless it's just a big meteorite on a trailer or something. <laughs> so when we saw this 2020 cooler, we realized everybody with 19 all the way back to 01 needs this thing. If, they, if you do anything with your truck that's aggressive, including tuning. So we put a kit together that allows you to do this. All the parts, all the hard to find items are in the box and you, you can heavy duty oil cool all the way back to 01. You can find that kit on bankspower.com. The next change in the 24 Duramax is a high pressure fuel pump, which we've got right here. Kind of a, like a little V8 engine, one of the cylinder heads off. Inside the pump, there's a cam ring, which is flat. So as you rotate that cam, the surface of the cam ring, the cam being inside of the cam ring is rising and falling as the camshaft rotates within the ring. You have a kind of a superior situation. In an engine, you have a lifter or cam follower and it rubs against a camshaft. Rubbing surface would never cover the entire surface of the lifter. But by doing this, it does cover the entire surface of the lifter. So you've got a uniform pressure profile across the face of this plunger. You still have rubbing or sliding friction, also uniformly loaded. So, so this gives it extended life, I think. This pump has a pumping capacity of 2,200 bar. That's 32,000 pounds per square inch. The 23 is 2,000 bar. So that's 2,900 pounds less, or nominally 29,000 pounds peak pressure. What does this other 3,000 pounds or so give you. It gives you the ability to put the fuel amount desired through smaller holes, atomizing it to a more refined state, improving the combustion process and the completeness of combustion. When the fuel is injected, you have droplets. The compressed air compressed by the piston rising in the cylinder is hot enough that those droplets start burning, but they they don't necessarily explode. Uh, they're not as volatile as gasoline. They burn from the surface in, peeling layers of molecules off the surface of this droplet until it's completely combusted. It's moving through the air, seeking oxygen to get enough momentum for it to burn completely. If it just stops, it's gonna burn the oxygen around it and starve. So it has to have enough momentum to keep moving through the available oxygen until it's gone. And that higher pressure gives you that. But if you're going to put 3,000 pounds more pressure into the fuel rails, you got to change the fuel rail. The fuel rail diameter on the 23, which is this fuel rail, is nominally, because these aren't perfectly round, nominally 24 and a half millimeters, and on the 24, 26.3 millimeters. I guarantee you, that's all, all additional metal wall. The 24 has a, a, a safety margin, just like the 23, to get that safety margin, you have to thicken the walls of the fuel rail, which they have done. You, you know, I want you to think about 32,000 pounds of pressure. Anybody's ever seen a water jet cutter? It's up there. That pressure number is way up there. The other thing that's different about the fuel rail, other than the thickness, is the length of the fuel rail. The length of the 23 is about 359 millimeters. The length 
of the 24 is about 343 millimeters. And one last thing, they, f the fuel rail pressure sensor has changed. Although it appears that the plug to the wire loom is identical, but this guy has to go another 3,000 PSI. All right, we're moving on to the cylinder heads. 23, 24. Externally, they look virtually identical. The 24 is more durable. They revised the structure inside, call it the water jacket area of the head. But what's really apparent uh, is the free length of the exhaust valve spring. on the 24 is greater than the free length on the 23. Well, in order to have more exhaust brake action, they're beefing up the 24 valve, valve spring so you can get more exhaust back pressure created by the geometry in the turbocharger turbine housing. The variable geometry is used for exhaust braking purposes as well. You could float the exhaust valves if you got the pressure too high. So you need more seating pressure. Essentially, that's what GM is doing here to get that braking pressure to a higher value and not float the valves off the seats. And if they don't seat, they smack the pistons or the piston smacks the valve. You don't want that to happen. This is something I, I ran through with a lot of different engines. We're the guys who patented uh, the speed controlled, back shift the transmission, lock the torque converter to get better braking. And on, on our early Duramax exhaust brakes, we were measuring braking horsepower of around 204, 205 braking horsepower uh, as a maximum. I've heard guys say, I can't feel the, the exhaust brake on these things. They're answering that uh, by changing the spring rate. And basically, you can see the free length of the spring, spring is higher. You know, it's almost a quarter of an inch more. The wire diameter is a bit smaller, 152 thousandths versus 156 to 158 thousandths. The outer diameter is also about 30 thousandths smaller. Thinner wire, but more turns. The installed height is the same, an inch 690. The seat pressure is where, where you see the difference. We get a, an average of about 80 pounds seat pressure on the stock springs up, up through 23. These little babies give you about 95 pounds of seat pressure. So you're picking up 15 pounds of seat pressure over the nose uh, is about the same. At an inch 330, in other words, 360 thousandths valve lift is where we're measuring open. We've got about um, 154 versus 154. Uh, coil bind, I think you can go a little higher valve lift with this spring uh, than with the earlier. But when I say over the nose, uh, that's a peak lift going over the nose on, on the camshaft. So that's a good thing. And if, <laughs> if you're Hooking up to your 36, 38, 40,000 pound trailer, you might want a little more exhaust braking. So what makes the exhaust back pressure? The variable geometry in the turbo. So let's have a look at the turbo. Now I give you the turbos. This is the 24, 23 and earlier. Inlet diameter, about an inch and three quarters. I'm told there's some durability improvement in the up pipes that feed this turbine mount casting. Uh, but the turbine mount casting is quite a bit different. We had one conventional perpendicular bolt and one angled bolt on either side of this earlier style L5P setup. Here, it's conventional. I, this might have had to do with manufacturing, but I don't think so. Anyhow, these bolts appear to be somewhat sy symmetrical. 
I think I'm getting it now. In terms of wrenching pr pressure, uh, you know, the old school deal is the bolts are symmetrical around the flange for uniform wrenching pressure, etc. And here, if you have automated bolt driving equipment, you had to clear the V-band clamp uh, where the turbine housing bolts to the center bearing housing. They went conventional here, everything's perpendicular bolt, and they moved the bolt on this side so that you could still hit it, but it's not a symmetrical bolt pattern. I think what they found was the load distribution works through the rest of the casting and makes the wrenching pressure adequately uniform. As far as the turbine housing itself and the turbine wheel, the outlet or exducer bore on the 24 is about 40 thousandths or one millimeter bigger than 23 and earlier. And the blade count on the turbine wheel goes from 11 to 10. So how, how is that a benefit? Well, bigger outlet and less turbine blades means more mass flow area for the exhaust. As long as you can get the, the necessary horsepower to drive this whole thing, because the turbine has to produce enough horsepower to overcome its own inefficiency, the drag of the bearing system, and the load of the compressor. And we're going for 25 more horsepower. We went from 445 to 470. Now let me show you something that's more visibly different. And that would be on the compressor side or cold side of the setup. To run the variable geometry mechanism, you've got to have a calibration controlled actuator. These are both Borg Warner pieces, but the 24 is a enhanced mechanism. It's quicker, it's more powerful, and as a result, you can change the speed of the turbocharger more quickly. So that kind of reduces turbo lag, if you want, want to call it that. It also allows you to, to control the air, but you can't change the air that fast. This help, helps you get closer to changing the air mass flow and pressure ratio more quickly. Throttle response, that's fuel efficiency, that's reduced emissions, all of the above. The inducer bores are both the same. The blade counts are both the same. So up through 23, the center bearing housing, which is water-cooled, it's kind of a one-piece thing here with a compressor backplate integral and in, in cast iron. On the 24, we've gone back to an aluminum backplate that bolts on it to the center bearing housing in the center of the back plate, which is quite conventional. Uh, the back plate in uh, this case also mounts the actuator assembly. And here, the compressor cover has the mount for the actuator assembly. So overall, a more robust unit, it's exactly what they need on the 24. I want to find out how far I can push one of these as soon as possible. We made over a thousand horsepower with the Gen 1 L5P Duramax. What do you think we're going to do with the Gen 2? It just so happens we have one right here on the dyno. Like and subscribe or you'll miss it. There's a problem with the button.